Hey, Matt Webley here, hope you're doing all right. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how AI is destroying the software as a service industry or SaaS industry. Um, yeah, AI is gonna be the end of the SaaS industry, which is absolutely bonkers. Since I'm actually in the SaaS industry and I've been for about eight years, something like that. I mean, maybe it's closer to 10 now, I don't know. but. For, for a great many years, my primary source of income has been software as a service, which is bonkers to think that within the space of, I don't know, when did ChatGPT come out? 2001 or something like that? Within the space of a few short years, AI has not just gone from, whoa, where did this come from for most people at least, but it's gone to basically, um, yeah, it's gonna disrupt the entire industry. So. What does this mean for traditional SaaS founders like me that have done it the old school human way? It means that uh, newbies are gonna come into the market and be able to clone our feature set that we've built over years and years and years and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, development uh, using human dev time, iterating, uh, getting feedback from customers, making it better, fixing bugs, just this slow iterative process that is software as a service that we've been doing for years and it's cost us time effort money creating new features and, and having to, to do it the old slow human way people new upstarts are going to come along and just clone it not quite with a prompt we're not there yet but i do foresee in the future i don't know if it'll be five years ten years or if it'll be two i'm not sure but at some point in the future you'll be able to just uh I, in fact some experts are predicting um, there won't be kind of like traditional software as we know it right now. It will be like, it will spin up as and when you need it. So just like you would get ChatGPT to write you a blog post and it will just do it instantly, you would almost just tell the AI what you want it to do and it would spin it up instantly. So for example, uh, if you wanted a fitness uh, and weight loss calculator, it wouldn't be an app that you downloaded from an app store uh, that somebody had spent years and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars building. It would be on the fly, it would be created almost on your device or in the cloud for your specific use via a, 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 probably a voice prompt at that point. So you just go, I want an app that's gonna track my lifts in the gym, blah, 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 and it will just spin it up and it'll know enough about you and enough about what people want and stuff and the context around what you're doing to be able to spin you up something that's pretty much perfect straight out of the box and probably be, uh, a lot of it be voice interface or whatever. But that is a neat, not, it's not super duper near time future, but that's where we're going to. We're going to a place whereby there won't be like a dedicated app for this. You'll have your LLM or, or whatever version of it in the future, your AI agent and it will spin up what you need as you go kind of thing. Um, and I know that's hard to think about right now. Maybe that's too far ahead. But, but in, the, in the nearer term, I mean, so, so we're heading to single voice prompts that create software and it's perfect, you know, and you can fix it on the fly. No, I didn't want it to do that. Do it like this, you know, and it just on the fly does it. But in the near term, what you've got is people like me and my students, they're actually building software as a service now with AI, with no code, no technical knowledge, um, and just creating, creating it with AI agents. So, so right now, we're not at AI spins up your app live in real time as and when you need it, custom for you. We're not there yet. But what we have transitioned out of is just humans being able to do it. Now, most of our teams, from what I believe in my software as a service business, are still 100% human, dabbling in AI a little bit here and there, but, but increasingly over the next year or two, they're gonna be forced into using AI or it just won't work for them anymore. So we've gone from human development as software as a service to very much a, a we're very mo much moving into a hybrid version, even for the old school dinosaur humans that are coders, they're gonna have to use AI in what they do, or it's not gonna, it's not gonna be good. 
because competition that you're using just AI or kind of like a Android, if you like, not, not Android, Google Android, but like a half human, half AI clone being a bit sci-fi, but I just mean somebody using AI that is a coder, they're going to leave them behind. So s traditional software as a service companies like mine are going to have to very quickly transition into a hybrid human AI uh, version of it, or they're just going to get left behind. But then you've got a new breed of entrepreneurial types uh, that are becoming SaaS founders using just AI. So I shared it, uh, maybe it was yesterday, less, not yesterday, so maybe it was the last video on the channel, but James has built some uh, software that helps Amazon sellers and, and eBay sellers and TikTok sellers create and optimize their e-commerce listings, right? And, and taking into account uh, increased click-through rates, uh, keywords, being compliant from a from a what naughty words you're not allowed to say on your listings, and all, all kinds of other stuff. But but it's like he's he's put that together with just AI, um, no code. Now, uh, which is bonkers because what's going to happen is people like me that have been building software as a service with human devs for years are going to have a lot of new competition in all markets, all niches with new guys like James and Jack and Tom and Tim, some of my other students, that are spinning up AI, uh, I'm not gonna say clones, because they're not really cloning any software, but, but like, essentially AI competitors, AI from start to finish competitors that they've built for less than $1,000 and, and, and eight weeks of their time as a non-coder. Like, how do you compete with that? I mean, the reality is, Succeeding in software as a service is going to become about the marketing, the sales and marketing side of it, more so than the building the software side of it. So the technical barrier that would have stopped you before becoming a SaaS founder has now been removed because ultimately anybody can do it. Obviously, not anybody can build a business, and that's where I, uh, where I come in. As a coach, as a mentor, I've been building online businesses in all different niches, all different business models for over 23 years. And there's certain psychological principles and certain strategies that work decade after decade and uh, across all industries, all niches. And it's me bringing that knowledge to that business, is, which is what takes somebody, somebody from being an AI SaaS founder that's knocked up some AI software in a month or two themselves into a SaaS, actual SaaS founder, business owner that's successful. So it, it, the way the world has gone, we've not quite at single prompt, clone me this software, we're not there yet, but we're not gonna be a million miles off that. But what, what we definitely have moved from is a human world where humans controlled the computers, spoke their language and created something that was saleable and scalable. We've definitely moved, and, and, and most people, I should say 99.9% .9 of people don't even know this has happened yet. It's only because that's what I do on this channel, and I'm at the forefront of this stuff, that I even know and, and are, I'm doing this stuff. So I'm one of those founders that has moved from the human bit and still got a foot well in the human world, partially because the dinosaur devs are not convinced to try the AI stuff yet, but, but another foot into the new world, which is... AI built software as a service. So AI software as a service is gonna be the end of the traditional old school software as a service business. Like software as a service is not going away. It's not anytime soon anyway. It's uh, one of, if not the best business, online business model for normal people to make good money and get rich. Passive income, faceless, single person business can be outsourced to AI agents now and, and VAs and stuff. Like there's so much good going for the business model, but it is being disrupted as we speak. It's not felt the effects of it yet. Calendly, for example, that I, I often use in, in this, uh, as an example in this, on this channel, because it's like, it makes hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And honestly, no offense to it, but it's not very good. I actually canceled it and changed to a different piece of software just this week uh, because I don't like the interface. I don't like, it's all right from a user point of view. It feels intuitive, but like it's really clunky and really rubbish and it makes hundreds of millions of dollars. Somebody's gonna come along with AI and a tweaked idea and they're gonna clone Calendly in a month or two 
and then they're going to push it out with some brand new AI marketing strategies. And they're going to, I'm not saying they're going to take Calendly's crown. You're not, you're not going to take a business uh, that away, a business's crown away when they're making hundreds of millions of dollars and they've got loads of loyal customers. You're not going to get that to happen overnight. But, but there's going to be AI startups that are chipping away at Calendly and the other incumbent uh, companies' market shares. And uh, I'm not even sure what they're going to do about that. Like, um, it's, it's, it's difficult because I can guarantee these big companies making lots of money have got huge teams. All that I can see is the logical conclusion is layoffs because uh, little AI upstart comes along and does everything that Calendly does for free, but then they have a unique selling point or two that they charge for, and all of a sudden you lose all the reason to stay with someone like Calendly because so-and-so's copied them and they're doing it for free. So massive, massive, massive disruption. I don't mean just on price, I mean on feature set, I mean on speed of iteration, um, just massive disruption coming to all SaaS businesses over the next one to ten, five, 10 years. 10 years, I think this whole space looks totally different. Uh, five years, I think that you'll see a lot of the software as a service companies that have taken things for granted get massively disrupted by AI founders, AI startup founders, like you guys that are watching this. I think uh, for SaaS companies that have been enjoying year on year growth, they're going to start to see plateaus. They're going to start to see declining, declining revenues as new AI founders that were only crippled by not having the funds and not having the technical ability come into the market with bigger, better ideas, able to execute them, them uh, quicker, easier, cheaper, and really start to take market share from these old dinosaur SaaS companies. And if, you don't, if you're a SaaS founder, you don't transition, well, you watch what happens. Maybe you'll come and watch this video in a year or two's time and go, yeah, Matt, we were growing year on year, 20%, 50%, 100%, whatever it is. And then we just started plateauing in 2026, 2027. And then we started declining revenues. Like, this is what traditional SaaS founders are going to see as new AI upstarts, uh, new startup founders. It's not even bootstrapping. Bootstrap's like a term to basically self-funded pennies, no VC, venture capital money, bootstrap founder is what I am, used our own money, grown organically, internally, uh, like never got outside funding and stuff. You're going to see micro bootstrap founders, AI, you're going to see kids, 12, 13, 14 year old kids knocking up AI in a couple of weekends after school that's competing with big boy SaaS uh, products and you didn't even you don't even know the AI founders you don't even know the 12 years old like this is what's going to happen now this industry is ripe for disruption now the question is if you're already a SaaS founder uh, what are you going to do about it but if you're not a SaaS founder are you going to get on the AI SaaS gold rush that is happening right now and is about to happen over the 12, next 12 18 months or are you going to sit on your hands and go, oh, I wonder if Matt's right. Is this going to happen? Is it, and, and are you going to sit and watch somebody else do it and then lose all your advantages because the world changes, times change? Or are you going to take your piece of the pie? Um, I've actually got a prototype generator, free tool, 100% free tool, that will show you. It takes about 10 to 12 minutes to knock up some software, just how I described. So you answer six questions, uh, very simple questions. An AI can generate the, the answers for you if you don't want to answer them yourself. And you put what that gives you into an AI agent, hit go, and it builds your software in real time. If you see that process happen, and there's a link down below in the description, if you see that process happen, you will very quickly go, oh, I see what Matt's talking about now. I've built some software with an AI prompt in front of my eyes. It's not somebody that can't do this, it's you that's done it. Uh, using just my free prototype generator. If you do that process, honestly, you'll be like, yeah, Matt's not wrong about this. Massive disruption is coming to the software as a service space, and it's going to be by you, people like you, uh, that are using AI to build software as a service. So there's my next 24 to 36 month take on this industry. 
you're going to see a lot of companies going, going like this. Whoa, what's happening? Bumpy, bumpy times are coming for software as a service. Adapt or die, move to the AI world or die. And, and if you're watching this and you're just a normal person that's interested in building your own software, honestly, if there was ever a time to do it, it's right now where you can be the disruptor instead of the disrupted and you can build a real business using AI uh, to build your own software as a service income stream. I help people do that and I've actually opened some one-to-one -one spots. If you're interested in working with me, not on uh, just building your AI software as a service, honestly, the AI agents can do that. Most, like anybody can do that now. But if you wanna build a business doing it, which is still a lot more than a few prompts, but if you want me to handhold you through that process, book a call, that link is down in the description as well. Like I said, I've got some one-to-one -one spots that I've just opened. Uh, if you're interested, we'll have a chat on the phone. And if I can help you, and if we're a good fit, then maybe you can start building your own AI-powered software as a service business, even if you've got no idea what you'd want to build or anything. It's a great business model. Ripe, you can be disruptor instead of disrupted. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, that's my thoughts. That's my take on it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.